Panic double yeah, over like there. <laughs> and they, they sprawl. Oh, dang. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Yanagita Podcast Show, Snap. episode 4-0. I got special guests. My brother. Hello, hello. Vince. Vince Silva. Dude, he's an MMA fighter. Eight and two. Correct me if I'm wrong. Seven and two. Seven and two. Okay, mm-hmm. seven and two. And not only that, he's a super humble, nice guy. Like, you would never think that this guy will ground and pound and just smash you to oblivion. Um, so, yeah, welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm horrible at receiving compliments, so <laughs> don't mind me if I look uncomfortable. <laughs> if you look uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Dude, Vince, so, like, how did you get started in all this? Like, who were you back, like, 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Yeah. That was, I just graduated high school. Okay. High I think school. we, like, uh, yesterday, too, we were talking about, like, I think both of us, did you start wrestling late in high school? Yeah, my senior year. So then me was my junior year, and then... Wrestled junior year, I didn't do very well. Senior year, did a little better, went to States, got my butt kicked over there. Mm-hmm. But then, um, yeah, after that, I I feel like we're repeating a conversation no, no. from But well, this is for the people. Yeah. Then, um, after that, I picked up jujitsu over at MGA, did that for a couple years, and then I did a lot of um, boxing, kickboxing with Brandon Vischer over at the War Memorial. Yeah. We were at Fitness 8, 808 for a little bit. That was um, up the road from here, actually. Mm. And then we went to War Memorial for quite a few years. Then uh, I went to um, Berman at My Martial Arts with Shane Hoyt. Oh, that's right. I did that for pretty consistently for maybe a, almost a year and then on and off. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I've always just enjoyed fighting. Hmm. Actually, so, I lied. I haven't always enjoyed fighting. I was going to ask, like, wait, so you've always liked fighting or like... Okay, this is the weird part is... In high school. Yeah, I was telling you, I was yeah. in high school, I was like, I'm still a nerd, but like, <laughs> I was, I was uh, a lot less confident, I want to mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. dang, this is like, um, the other day we were filming like a commercial, yeah. not a commercial, but like a promo video. Right. And then, like, I'm talking the whole time, just fine. Mm-hmm. And then we're, like, doing interviews. Mm. And he's like, okay, when you're ready, just talk. Just talk. I was talking the whole time. And then just literally, talk. it was just like... Whoop. Just crickets. Like, ah, I can't even <laughs> say my name. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Um, what the heck was he just saying? No, no, just about the whole fighting thing. And, I mean, what, 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 what made you feel like you were a nerd? Um... Mainly, like, I was... I was bullied and stuff. Like, I was bullied, I got beat up, and mm. that's why I, I found jiu-jitsu, and then wrestling, I was like, yeah, I gotta learn something. I had pretty overprotective, overprotective parents, okay. so, like, I didn't do a lot of, like, sports and stuff. When I got into high school, mm. the first thing I kind of did that was, like, group-focused was mm. uh, tennis. I played tennis. tennis. What? Yeah, freshman through senior man, year. playing yep. tennis, bro. Mm. Singles and doubles. <laughs> yeah. Tennis. And then actually, a friend of mine uh, in high school, Kelly, he, he, um, my junior year, he asked me to go to wrestling tryouts with him. Oh, this is that coming Kamehameha school. Yeah, because he didn't want to go alone and he wanted to try out wrestling. Got it. And I was like, I mean, I guess I'll go with you. Yeah. All right. But what the coach at the time did was like, he started it off slow mm. and then he kind of ramped it up a little more as like time grew along. Who was the coach at the time? Uh, it was... Nelson. Nelson, okay. Yeah, we've had Sir. Kobe and uh, Coach Ivy in the back. Oh, nice, nice. Man, legends. Yeah. It was uh, Nelson, Serbe, and CJ Elizarz was another. Mm. But um, eventually, he like two weeks later, he stopped going. Mm. But then I was already like going pretty consistently. And I was, <clears throat> I was like, dang, I can't quit. Like, I don't, I don't quit. But like, I didn't feel like stopping. Right, after a couple weeks. So then just kind of snowballed to where like, I'm just rest. I'm a wrestler now, I guess. Huh? Yeah. So did that. I wrestled at 135 pounds my uh, junior year. And what do you walk around now? Uh, now, like 170. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 175. Like <laughs> you said with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> Fighters always lie about their weight. No. <laughs> always <laughs> shave off five pounds. Five pounds. Yeah. Oh my god. But um, <laughs> yeah, I wrestled at 135 my sophomore uh, junior year. Sorry, and then my senior year I wrestled at. I was probably like 45, but I wrestled at 52 because at 45 and the weight class below that, there was like really good guys. And good they were guys. like, all right, well, it's time we have you 
like go up against them when you already get your butt kicked against them in like the training room or you just go up a weight class and fight people that you may or may not get your butt kicked against mm. so yeah i did okay at 52 i think it was a weight it's a little different from like mma weights. that's right yeah that's yeah. right yeah because in wrestling um donovan nobriga was oh, in my yeah. weight class bro like we'd always clash for first and i think but like, I, I pulled guard on him <laughs> we're re- <laughs> bro we're wrestling okay we're wrestling Wait, were you already doing jujitsu at the time i was doing jujitsu oh, i was nice. maybe like a six month in mm-hmm. but i, I love triangles right at the time and i was yeah, like yeah. and i shot in for a double he sprawled and i pulled guard coach panufa you on a keto what are you doing? Get off your back. You want to get off? This guy's scolded. Did you pin yourself? I pinned myself. <laughs> I pinned myself. Dude, I'd seen a guy do that my, my senior year. It was like my first time with a new batch of wrestlers, like yeah. a bunch of freshmen. Yeah. And this guy goes for like a knee bar. <laughs> like one of the freshmen on the team that we, we kind of teased. Dude, this guy, He like i never seen it since, but this guy's just standing, right? And another dude is laying on his back going for a knee bar and right. they call a pin. But this guy's like still standing up. Oh dude, it was my so goodness. Fun. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah, jujitsu. Um, some stuff works in wrestling, but it's like it's completely different when you have to stay off of your back. back. Yeah. Yeah. So then, after wrestling, you went into jujitsu. Just is that? Why was that? Was that to continue like a grappling sport? Or? Yeah. So after after high school, high school, I went to. Colorado Mesa University for a hot minute. I went okay. for a whole semester. Okay. Yeah, there but while I was up there, I I was trying to break down, because I knew I was coming on, so I was like, what was the first fight that I saw? Uh-huh. It was probably a BJ Penn fight, but the first one that I watched with, like, and this, oh, this goes back to the, uh, like, what got me into fighting. Mm. Anderson Silva versus Yushin Okami, which is, like, not one of his, like, best performances. It was, like, a vintage Anderson, like, knocks the guy out pretty quick, but, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah, that fight, I was like, holy smokes, this is crazy. Because I, w- I came from wrestling, and, uh, like, you know how when you wrestle, it's like a skill set, but then right. it's missing that, like, <laughs> that other component of, like, pinning isn't realistic in, like, a fight, you know? Right. So then, like, jujitsu is, like, on your back. Mm. You know, you can use, jujitsu is just, like, it is wrestling, it's just grappling. You yeah, submission I mean? wrestling. But, basically. um, yeah. You don't get pinned in jujitsu, right? You know what I mean. So, it's just like another step. Like, uh, it's the whole grappling, grappling as a right. whole. You know, wrestling grappling. and then jujitsu. So after I saw Vitor, not Vitor, Anderson Silva and mm-hmm. um, Yushin Anderson. Okami, that was August twenty seventh. When was that? UFC or was that when they were fighting? That's UFC. That was August oh. twenty seventh, two thousand eleven. Wow. Yep. So um, there was like a rec room at the college and then everyone kind of gathered and we all paid like five bucks, I think, for the pay-per-view. Yeah. And then I watched that on the card too. I think there was like Brendan Schaub and Noguera. Noguera knocked him out. Wow. Um, Noguera knocked out Schaub. Yeah. Wow. Um, who else? Uh, funny story about that. Yeah. <laughs> that he, you, know, you know Brendan Schaub? Brendan Schaub. He, he podcasts too. Uh, right. Yeah, I listen to a bunch of podcasts. So like yeah. I was saying earlier, I'm a little nervous because... <laughs> I listen to so many podcasts, yeah. but I don't like. I, this is my first podcast. Hey, you know, there you go. Yeah. Um, so when Brandon was walking out, they mm-hmm. chat. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's like Eva Mohair, Eva Mohair. Okay, Eva yeah. Mohair. Yeah. So they're like chanting, chanting. And oh. Brandon's like walking out, and he's fighting like Nogueira's a legend in Brazil, you know? Right. Pack Stadium, and Brandon's like, all right. Like walking out. Like, wow. looking, like, wow, they're chanting. And then he looks to his, like, Brazilian coach, and he's like, what are they chanting? And he goes, oh, they're, just, they're saying, you will die. <laughs> you, you will, will die. die. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's like, why did you tell me that? They go in, and he gets knocked out, and he's like, ah, well, that's all. Wow. <laughs> <But> yeah, <laughs> Brazilians, so, man, they're, yeah. So, they're Chop got knocked out. There was a couple other fights in the card. The main one I remember was... Anderson, just the way he moved against Yushin oh, to like get out of the way of punches, crazy. like use defensive grappling, knock him down, TKO him on the ground. Anyways, after that, I went on like a huge like, you know when you like find something you like on the internet and you can yeah. just go into a rabbit hole. Oh, for sure. Yeah, dude, I went back to like Hoist Gracie. I started wow. with UFC one, two, three, four. Like, just went down like old school oh. fighters: Dan Severn, Mark Coleman. Uh, was there? <sighs> All of those era, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the two, oh. the UFC one, two, four. Mm-hmm. 
cool. Yeah, so all those guys. And then before you know, I started building up like a repertoire of like, like fighters' names yeah. of a certain era to the next era. Wow. Era. <laughs> so you probably watched some Pride too then. Yeah, a bunch yeah, of Pride. Yeah, a bunch Dude, of Pride. I'm, oh my goodness! Speaking of nerding out, like I, I nerded out so hard on like just fighters themselves. I know the records when the fights Whoa. were, where I was like, yeah, I, wow. get, I get pretty fired up. Sorry. That's that's why you're you're you know doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, because I remember the one of the first fights I remember was BJ Penn choking out Matt Hughes the oh, first yeah. time they fought. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, who is this guy? Wait, this guy's from Hawaii. What the? And Wait, that he's a black belt in this jujitsu thing. Like, what is that? And you like especially back then nobody really knew what jujitsu no. was like. If you look at a bunch of old school fights like high school fights like in Kulamalu or like yeah. the KCC, it was always like, like stand him up, stand him back. Yeah, like stand him like, back. Ground was n- not not no. existent. But no. then now kids are so educated nowadays from like watching UFC and MMA in general. Like you see like schmucks going for like an arm bar. From yeah, now, you're like <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what like, is this? Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. Like, you know, that makes me think about um, I after the whole BJ Pan UFC, I, I went into a rabbit hole of pride. Mm-hmm. And then in Japan, I, I remember I was in elementary school and Hoist Gracie was fighting Sakuraba. Yeah, yeah. The it Gracie was like killer. an hour long match. Mm-hmm. I was like, no time limit. Wow, this is jujitsu. And I didn't know what he did. I didn't know he was a catch register or whatever. And I was like, Oh man! As much as I want to root for the countryman, like he's probably gonna get choked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, it's hoist, Gra- it's the hoist Gracie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it just went on and on and on for that whole Kazushi, hour. Yeah. Kazushi, Sakurai, Sakurai. 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 yeah, ridiculous. Was and that? Did they call that a draw? Was that like a ninety uh, minute? He threw in the towel. Oh, Elio Gracie. Yeah. Snap! Oh, so the hoist towel. lost that one. Hoist lost that one. First Gracie on. His and then record. before that, so then I dove in the rabbit hole. I was like, man. Who who beats the Gracies? Like yeah, what, yeah, what is yeah. this? And then before that, he had fought uh, Henzo Gracie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, he broke his he broke arm his with the right? Oh my goodness! And then before that was oh no, after that was Hoyler, I think Hoyler Gracie. I'm not sure exactly what Gracies yeah. he beat, but I know he didn't beat Hickson. Yeah, they never fought. Yeah, but yeah. dude, if you if Hickson fought oh, more, my. Oh, oh bro, do you dude, know dude, that movie? A documentary, Choke. Uh, Choke. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, such a good doc. Oh Him doing goodness. uh like his breathing exercises. Yeah. Was uh what, what's his son's name? He was in it too, huh? Uh he fights not too. Crone. Crone. Ice cream Crone. Crone. Yeah. yeah, ice cream crone Gracie. Yeah. He trains with the Diaz's out there. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh dude, like see that's why it's so crazy. Like, what is the most like what is it for you that's so surreal about combat sports for you? I mean I have no idea. Like there's like why do you keep doing it? What, what's crazy is like people will ask like you hear the question all the time like oh, what are you gonna do with the rest of your life like what, what are you what are you interested in like right. what do you like what are you drawn to and a lot of like for the longest time like even up until recently I'm like I don't know exactly what I'm into you know right. I'm just not sure like like some people they have it from when they're young you know like when I grow up I'm going to be a firefighter Mm, yeah, and there are people up, like that. They're a firefighter. Yeah, you know? and then other people they figure it out when they're seventeen. Then other people they figure it out when they're in their mid twenties. And yep. then other people are <laughs> still lost at like sixty. You know? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, finding I guess your, I don't want to get too philosophical, but like yeah. your, your purpose in life, I guess. Yeah. All I know is that whenever I talk fighting, whenever I do fighting, whenever I train people, whenever I like do anything to do with combat sports. I get fired up. Dude, your eyes are like glowing right now. You're like... Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't <laughs> You're know just lighting up. I'm trying to relax. Like, yeah. So, wait, so with combat sports, so what is that like for people listening? What is that like preparing for a fight? Preparing for a fight? Yeah. What does that look like? Hmm. Like the most... like. It, all of it is just anticipation. Like the fight itself is that's the that's the easy part when you mm. when they lock the cage and you're in the fight like at least for me I don't you don't feel you don't really feel anything like it, it's not really pain it's more like like oh uh, like I'm hurt or like I'm rocked like I gotta wow. get away you know huh. it's not really like owie that hurt it's more of like a like oh I'm losing now mm. you know but at, don't get me wrong after the fight. 
it hurts like a mother. <laughs> you know, I let I leg kicked this one guy a couple times, and like I smashed his leg, and I you would have thought he hit my leg. I, I was wow. limping after. I was like, dang, there's like blood coming down my shin. I'm like, oh, my leg hurts, and I kicked that guy. You know, <laughs> but um, wow. yeah, all of it is just like anticipation. Like, how am I gonna do? Like, what is the result gonna be? Like, yeah. am I gonna win? Am I gonna lose? How am I gonna lose? How am I gonna win? Wow. So like a lot of it, it like. I can th- I can think about thinking about fighting and like right. my palms get sweaty, you know. Wow, it's terrifying. <laughs> That's crazy. So like, you did nine fights. So for that feeling that you said you got you got kind of like nervous, hands sweaty. Does that still happen in your last fight? Yeah, I want to say that you're if you don't get nervous before a fight, you're either crazy or <laughs> lying. Oh my <laughs> you know? God. I like that crazy or lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like everybody gets nervous before fights yeah. and it always like you just have like you can say it too like just yeah. make friends with that feeling like that means you're about um, to fight if you feel right. that way you're just getting ready to fight but it's still never <laughs> you're still nervous like yeah um, and then it's just that anticipation and then when the fight's over yeah. win or lose like that was the res- that was what you waited for mm. so then now you just take from there move on take it from there so what is that like? Like an eight week, twelve week? I did a couple process. like real short notice. Really? Um, like what is short notice for you? Like two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yo. Yeah, that was my one what? of my losses. And a two week notice. One of my wins it was a short notice. Oh my goodness. Yep. And it's, then it's ideally, almost a, it's a blessing and a curse too because blessing and a curse. It's less time you have to anticipate, you know, uh, going out there, but also more likely that you gas out or you weren't ready. All right. So Excuse me. what do you do to get your body condition for like a fight? Wait, so what are the, what are like the MMA rules for people listening? What what is it? Uh it's basically like punches, kicks, elbows, knees mm-hmm. and then um like my fights are actually amateur, which is why it's, it's not that crazy that I'm 72 like mm-hmm. amateur, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like professionally those guys are at a higher level, but mm-hmm. I still had nine fights. You know, yeah. I fought nine different, actually eight different people, one guy twice. Wow. But uh, there we go. Yeah. Um, the what condition, the condition, the condition, condition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, like, what do you do to condition your body? I mean, because you said, like, the two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, but if you have a full camp, mm-hmm. or, what do you normally do? So, what I learned with the short notice ones yeah. is it's kind of, like, your cardio is almost, like, where it's going to be. So, like, if you, I've done it where, like, you push to the brink. And then you go in the fight, like hurt, you know. Oh, like a lot yeah. of fighters, they do that nowadays, and like even like fights recently in the UFC or like bigger name fighters, they'll do the same thing where you like over prepare mm. or you like don't um, have the right rest and recovery because you're so like uh, cool. like you wake up at wake up at four in the morning with like cold sweats like fuck you had a dream where you you got knocked out you know yeah and then you're thinking like is is that guy is he working out right now you know like what is he doing so then you're like i gotta go for a run you know Uh, so it's just like that anxiety of not being prepared yeah can like work against you if you don't have the right mindset oh that's where if you think like oh i'm resting i'm recovering then um like by not doing anything i'm doing the right thing you know Mm. or just active recovery like swimming, going for like a walk. Yeah. Conditioning for a fight, it's kind of, it's like you have to train your, like the reason why MMA is so crazy, at least to me, is because all the variables that go into like one, one thing. Yeah. So like, you know, when you play like a video game, like and you build your character. Mm, building a character. There's yeah. like strength. There's yeah. like cardio. There's like his kicks. Yeah. There's, his wrestling, his mm. jiu-jitsu specifically, like his clinch, his um, like punches, whatever you right. you're all the use. attributes, right? So yeah. like all those attributes, mm. not only are they like set where they are, mm. but like in my mind, they're always like decreasing mm. if you don't like keep them up. You right. know, if you don't train them in in those aspects, like so, I started off grappling pretty heavy. So with wrestling, I started off wrestling, and I felt like ah, oh, well, I, it's unrealistic because. I can't submit and I'm not like I can't fight from my back so then I right. went to jiu-jitsu over MGA right. got my butt kicked right by um, all Keith guys and I was like okay I feel a little more complete like I'm gaining 
stats. Right. You know, I Submission, can fight off my back. back I can, yeah. And originally, I was like a top mm-hmm. guy. I'm, st- I'm still more a top guy, but I appreciate the bottom now. Like, right. I can, I'm better at sweeps and, like, oh, trying to, go. like, hip up to stand. Mm-hmm. And then recently, within, like, the last year or two, I've been boxing for, like, a couple of years. But the last two, I feel like I've... I made that little gym at my house. Mm. I got a little setup, you know, yeah. I got the bags up and I've had people come over and I've just been training like my skill set specifically in stand up. So yeah. like if I'm being honest, my grappling probably is like <laughs> declining, but my striking is getting it's a little better. So better. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, wow. I digress. No, yo. It's, yeah. just, it's amazing. Like thinking about like like what you're saying, because if you don't use it, it goes down. Yes. Right. And that's it's, so true. It's all, um, that's true and it's amazing because we can dig like uh, so deep into like if you don't if you only play top style jiu-jitsu then your bottom gets worse yeah 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 or if you only do like certain punch combinations but you mm-hmm. don't spar your sharpness probably goes yeah, down yeah. it's so amazing how much goes into a fight yeah and those variables that's what makes wow. it so exciting to me is like you can play with all of those like all of, but what i was saying about uh training for the fight right so there's that skill set that's Mm. always declining but then there is your like strength and cardio like how much strength in what areas do you have for each technique Mm. so like we're talking about like grappling and striking yeah the two aspects of fight yeah but if you grapple and strike at the same time so like punching takedown to the ground like grapple on the ground they get up we're back punching, mm. you know, horizontal fighting, vertical fighting, horizontal mm-hmm. fighting, vertical fighting, clinch, back down, back up. So, mm. like, when you start to mix in, like, when you combine the martial arts, the mixed martial arts, yeah. you get even more tired on right. top of, like, an adrenaline dump because you're, like, oh so my goodness. amped up or, like, nervous. Yeah. Your cardio has to be even better because after that dump, yeah. you know, what do you have left in the tank? Woo. So, how long are the rounds? Amateur is three three minute rounds. And after those three three and a half minute rounds, how do you feel after that first three, round? Three three minute rounds. Three three minute rounds. Mm-hmm. How do you feel after that first round? So I'm. It's happened to me multiple times where <laughs> you're just exhausted. You're like, I don't know how I'm gonna go back to the next round. Wow. That's crazy. But then, you also remember that guy's gonna like knock your head off in a second if you don't do something. So. Huh. You just get up, walk forward, and hope for the best. Walk <laughs> forward, <laughs> <laughs> hope for the best. Like wow. I was like. I was training you the other day, and I was yeah. telling you, like, oh, yeah, the, like, left step, left arm, right step, right arm. Yeah. Like, we're just trying to sync up the basics. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I was moving around and, I, and you started to panic, you mm-hmm. know, then what do you do? Mm. So, oh, like, wow. you train everything so that it's, like, when you regress to, like, the worst version of what it could be, yeah. it's still pretty good. Yeah. You know? Wow. And so, I mean, I was watching some of your matches on the, on the tube. Cringe. <laughs> Cringe. You're so, so humble. Bad. Bro, before I go into it, bro, I just want to acknowledge, bro, that you're so freaking humble, bro. Like, um, when I reached out to you and, you know, you're super cool, super chill. And, and bro, like, like what you're saying, bro, I don't think nobody would expect you to, to be, like, to be who you are. Like, people are like, oh, yeah. It's cool More guy. compliments. <laughs> <laughs> acknowledgement. Yeah. Well, it's just acknowledgement. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I'm just speaking honestly. Right on. Because I really appreciate that like for me it's so hard to have someone on the podcast or talk to somebody if they have a big ego mm-hmm. that's why it's just, i actually relate better with combat sport and like people who are doing so- or doing well in something yeah 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 because they're like no you know they're very like 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 you i'm nervous to be here <laughs> big deal we got mics we got a cat we got a guy we got over a there. Dody in the back the looking, guy. looking handsome Jeez, so, <laughs> so going into the video, it was just like amazing because some of them, I would notice you go with your striking, and then you would use some of your wrestling, pin them against the fence, and then go for ground and pound and rear naked chokes. And later on, it started changing, mm-hmm. right? It started changing. So like, uh, I think it was the one was what, what was the later fight? I wasn't exactly sure the date. The last this one was uh, twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. How did that go? That one was. A lot more stand-up. So that guy was more of like a... He had... It's called a... It's called a buggy choke from your back. A buggy so like choke? One of his fights he what? did... A, you know what a buggy choke is? No. Okay. 
YouTube out here. But yeah. it's like a, um, so you're on your back, and you like, so you're on your back. They're on top of you in side control. You reach over their neck, so their head's like now in your armpit. Right. And then you grab your own leg this oh. way. And then it's like a blood choke. Wow. But you pop their head, you know? Yeah. Like watermelon. So and he, he had good, one of yeah. those, and I was like, God dang. Like, he did a buggy choke, like, in an actual wow. fight. It That's was impressive. like It was against, a, like, a lower level. Like, the guy that he fought wasn't the most talented individual, but, damn, this guy's got a buggy choke. So, so what was he, like, a blue bell, purple bell? Or, or just like a that. good grappler? Just a decent grappler with wow. a really nice submission. Confident enough to go for a buggy choke. Well, I mean, no, yeah, it's impressive. So then, like, against me, too. <clears throat> oh, I tore my ACL in... 20, how was it, 2018? Oh. Was yeah, 2018. During sparring? January. Sparring. Yeah, I just went cold into like a sparring session and we just were like, oh, went at it. Just <laughs> went at it cold. I went for like a judo hip toss thing and he said no. <laughs> oh. So my knee just kind of like. What was this? Grab the other way. At, uh, MG or something. Just grab uh, this was at Fitness 808. This was a while ago. Fitness 808? Yeah. I didn't know if it was Fitness 808 or something. Oh, the, whatever that. it was right before Jeff closed it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh. So then, wow. tore my ACL, went a whole, through a whole year, like nine months of, and it's only three months till you can like walk-ish jog. Yeah. And then, a bunch of physical therapy, and then after nine months, you can kind of go a lot harder. So like your muscle atrophies, because you're not using that side of your body, mm. and you just got to kind of like, it's still kind of off, but I'm probably not putting as much work as I should into like <laughs> beefing up my right leg. Right leg. But, um... Oh, he, I was going to say, he went for, like, a knee lock, like a heel hook, something. Oh. I'm, I'm real Wait, set. who went for the heel hook? The the guy you were talking about that had the buggy choke. Oh, yeah. So, like, first round, I think I just blitzed him. Even then, my striking wasn't, like, that was, like, two, years, two ago. years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's a big difference. So, I was, I felt a lot more comfortable than I did. Like, in my first fights, it was definitely more, like, how do I get him to the ground? Because I'm going to beat him on the ground. You right, know? and you did. Yeah. And that's exactly what you did. Like, I was impressed, bro. Like, I was, like... Dude, this guy is just like pure submission grappler and just getting after grab the double A, single A, like just go. Yep. Like, like I was impressed. I was like, wow. It was a little. Uh, I don't want to say it was like a panic double, but it's just like my, in like my instinct. Yeah. Like it's my, <laughs> my instinct to just like when I engage. Yeah. Eventually, I'm just gonna <clears throat> change levels and blast w yeah but um a little later it started to like i was more comfortable on the feet and then definitely right. my last fight i was like okay i will stay on the feet right you're throwing more kicks yeah i, I noticed you're throwing more kicks i think he threw a kick and then one of my like go-to moves is i'm I, i'm good at catching kicks so oh, i caught right. the kick i think i overhand righted him and then it wasn't really like a takedown but he kind of like sat back and he didn't pull guard but like he was okay with the if the you team. went to the ground so then i felt that like because i didn't i didn't wrap his legs and right you had one leg pull him out uh he kicked he caught i him. grabbed it overhand right and then he like he let go like he fell oh he was like okay yeah come down yeah and i felt that i went down i was in like top half half I say. top half forward and i was like ah we're still like when you're fresh in the beginning that was in like the first like 40 seconds but when oh, you're wow. When you're fresh in the beginning, it's like a lot of like energy, you know, oh. to do it. So he's scrambly, and I'm right. trying to feel him out. And I was like, I'm not gonna risk like some kind of crazy submission. Yeah, yeah. like inverted <laughs> triangle, like, or triangle, crazy. like yeah. Um, so like I got, I went to get up. He went for my leg, and mm. I was like, Oh hell no! I just got this thing back. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you said I, it was like I don't know angle. if he went for my right leg. Yeah, but yeah. he went for like a heel hook or something. Wow. And then, um, and that's only been, dude, heel hooks are a whole nother thing that we could get into. But, you right. know, like in jujitsu, jitsu So like, it's allowed. Yeah. 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 It was allowed in that one. But, like, um, so I got it from there. Yeah. And I think the rest of the fight was on the feet for the most part. Wow. So for people listening, people are like, what, 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 what is a heel hook? What is a leg yeah, lock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you describe a heel hook and leg lock, bro? It's like, huh. you know when you bend your knee in the direction it's supposed to go? Yeah. It's like, bend it the other way. That's a good explanation. a little more, you uh, know? That's exactly what a heel hook is. You just, yep. yeah, grab the heel and just, mm -hmm, oh. mm -hmm. So you, you, you spun out of that heel hook? Or? Yeah, I spun out and then. Uh, and you stood up. Yeah, I, w I was just throwing, 
I kept thinking so like this this also comes with experience too and I, I honestly learned it just learned it in this fight so like if I have another fight coming up I'll use this I got this in my like you take something from every fight you know yeah that you can use in like the next oh, one you gotta dude you gotta get that 10th one bro I know I think so oh. fights, that's a good number <laughs> Um, but, uh, so the, the experience that you got with oh, yeah. that last fight, not yeah. panicking because not panicking, I kept thinking I hurt him Oh, and I was like, okay, so I hit him with a punch. I saw like his eyes light up and I was like, oh, bro, coming in hot. Oh, throw a combo and then he makes it out and I'm like, dang it. Huh? Throw another combo. Boom. Hit him at the end of a punch. He looks rocked again. I come in hot again, oh. trying to finish him with like a long combo. <laughs> he makes it out again. I'm like, what the heck, dude? Wow. So then um, in the second round, I was like, ah, less, um, like I was rushing it, you know? Uh, I was like less. And you were probably exhausted after that. I, was, I wasn't I was exhausted, but yeah. I was definitely getting fatigued because yeah. I was just throwing bombs for no reason. <laughs> like, like I was telling you, I was like, right. if you get technical with it, yeah. you, you can throw like 100 hard punches, but if right. they don't hit where right. they're supposed to or they don't hit anything at all, yeah. you just hit nothing a hundred times yeah so um then the next the next round i was like oh i'm just gonna try to kick your leg kick your leg kick your leg this mm. is the one where i hurt my leg oh that's a yeah. like shin bleeding yeah wow. so i i ended up going leg kick leg kick leg kick leg kick leg kick and, so uh, where did you learn all your leg kick stuff because i know you got your boxing like we're talking from yeah, yeah. wailuku visher uh and what about the leg kicks pretty kick much boxing. all of that is shane hoyt from uh my martial arts oh that's uh, with Ermin. Yep. With Ermin. Oh, okay, okay. Where, they're what? Where are they at now? Uh, right, uh, they moved from... They were They were right over here, from, right? The 808 gym before. No, no, no. No. My martial arts was... My martial arts, Ermin. Like, like behind Minute Stop on Dairy Road. Oh, there, okay, by like okay. The, I think it was like... They were right next to that CrossFit. Mm, maybe a CrossFit. Yeah. Like a gym and the kitchen was right in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across the street, Honda Highway, right? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Across yeah. the Triangle Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. where my martial arts was. Then they moved. Oh. Probably in the last year or two, uh, behind uh, Kalamani, they got a pretty big, big warehouse back there. Oh. But yeah, Shane Hoyt, he's like yeah. the Muay Thai master. Wow. Um, at least as far as I know, on Maui. Yeah. He, yeah, his striking is ridiculous. Like it's. Wow. It's at a really high level, yeah. but um, just having him work me, you know. Like, right. It, when you work with guys that are like better than you, mm-hmm. when when you fight guys that are less than them, it's a little easier. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Oh, totally, bro. It's like training with higher level belts, yeah. and then you roll with yeah, your exactly. Same, it's like whoa. Yeah, yeah. so you're not it, throwing like these crazy. You're rolling with a black belt, yeah. like days at a time, yeah. and then you're like, dang, dude, I this I suck. I can't do anything. You know, I, I'm I can't not do anything. good. Ninety nine percent of people can't. Blue belt, blue belt, or purple belt comes along, yeah. and you're like. Say, okay. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, you just feel a little better. Like, you can actually do... There's something. Anyway, that's like Shane. So, Shane right. just... He works me. Wow. And even my other friend, Mitchell Navarro. Yeah, he kicks my butt all the time. His his striking is real fine, too. He's a fighter, well. too? Uh, He is actually... He's a cop now. But oh, okay. He's just... Uh, striking enthusiast mm, mm-hmm. i like that yeah enthusiast yeah he's just a he just can throw hands and kicks yeah he has really nice wow. striking but wow. um so then him as well and then just picking things off of each other so like mm. like with Shane too or with anybody that you um like spar against like you try something it works or it doesn't work and you're yeah. like okay put that on the list like don't kick there because he will kick here and that hurts you know like, and then you just yeah. kind of adjust from from there yeah oh my gosh so that's where you got the kick the kickbox because that was really cool watching the evolution from just just power takedown submission and then mm-hmm. a little bit of ground and pound yep to like uh more hands and then it was like emergency takedown yeah and then and then you would still rear naked choke them mm-hmm. um and then to to more kicks yeah kickbox. yeah and it became more kicks probably i don't know when it was like eight seven uh, 18 or something like that your video i was mm-hmm. like wow i see more kicks the, going the on. thing about like the that i well this isn't a fact this is my opinion but yeah like the difference between like jujitsu and and grappling and striking 
is striking is it, it is technical and mm. like reading movements and doing combos is like super important but yeah. it a lot of it is just muscle memory and like muscle memory. the amount of times that you did a punch or did a kick mm. so like I, I feel like I didn't throw enough kicks to feel comfortable yet then at some point there's a moment where you look back and you're like oh I'm comfortable at throwing kicks now mm. like I had tight hips for the longest time I'd look at <sighs> videos and just be like why are you kicking straight up like I would kick people in the nuts all the time <laughs> like if you don't turn over your kick yeah. like if you watch a fight and somebody gets kicked in the nuts it's like okay they, that was a bad kick like wow. you kicked bad you didn't pivot over no. and like turn it in oh that, or you, that or you're a cheater <laughs> or you're a cheater but um oh gosh yeah, so, like, even watching my, like, old videos of myself hitting minutes, I'm like, God, why? Now, at least I can look at myself in videos and be like, okay. Yeah. You look half decent. Wow. Pretty good. Yeah. See, you know, and what you reminded me of, um, like, you're going to appreciate this, the old school fighters, bro. Because, mm-hmm. so, after UFC 1, 2, and maybe, I think, 4, after just straight jujitsu, hoist yeah, crazy, yeah. after that, he started losing, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everybody was like, oh, I'm trying to understand his grappling. And then came the era of the Boxer stand wrestler. and bang yep. wrestlers. Yeah, the Chuck Liddell. Oh man, I remember that that guy was crazy. Tito Ortiz and yep. Randy Couture, and they just reigned supreme, two hundred five and heavyweight. Yep. And it just reminded me of that. Like you got your wrestling. You know, if you got to use it, you'll use it. Mm-hmm. But it's more like you'll just if someone t- tries to take you down, good luck. Yeah. yeah right. It's like, like yeah, sprawl. Yeah, defensive wrestling. And, uh, and then you got your strikes. Oh, my. And that was two years ago, the last fight. Like, yep. people improve a lot in two years. Yeah. That's like a white to blue belt. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm like, that's crazy. that's crazy. Especially if you, like, stay consistent. and Yeah. You know, oh, dude. I meant to say this earlier because we were talking about, like, getting ready for a fight. Yeah. So we were doing, like, the stats thing. Right, right, right. Um, so then there's... Maybe I didn't talk about it. Like the d- training, yep, your skill set, and then uh-huh. training your cardio, and then try to balance oh, those together. Wow. So, what does the weekly training week look like for you? Like, I mean, let's just say now, like right now, without anything going on, no fights. What does it look like for you? For me now, yeah. hmm. <laughs> I like totally a little less than you think. I, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, I'll hit the bag a couple times a week. Do some like drills. I'll do some road work. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, not anything too intensive. Mm-hmm. Mainly just like I'll have like friends come over. We'll have like a little session together, mm-hmm. uh, inconsistently, you know, depending on everybody's schedules, busy lives. But definitely when like if there's a fight coming up and I call upon my resources, you know, mm-hmm. then it would be a lot more like. So, so what does that look like? That would be like Monday. Yeah, at one point, I, well, especially if you're working, at right. one point it was like wake up at like wake up at four in the morning. Yeah. Get a run it so you can shower, then start work at like five or six so wow. that you can work all day. Like I remember I would like I would shower I would try to shower, but I would freaking like be in work clothes, driving to a gym, like changing in oh. the car while I'm driving to like get some clothes on and like wrap my hands because I'm already wow. late to class, you know, trying to go get a second workout in so that I could go to like I would go to um my martial arts from four no five to six thirty and then Got that was it. when MGA started at from six thirty to eight, I think it was. <clears throat> wow. So then I go my martial arts and then I'd be late to my martial arts and then late to MGA. I'm just like wow. late guy trying to make it happen. Late guy trying to make it happen. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm wow. freaking busy. I'm trying. Wow. But um not like every day not like five days a week. That's right. that was like two, maybe three times a week. Right. And then yeah, just trying to get any kind of like cardio. It's definitely a lot less structured then, but since like I started doing a little more like fitness related mm-hmm. Condition stuff, conditioning yeah. things like I, I feel like if I was to get a camp together now I could probably like structure it a lot more precisely you know doing like heart rate and like all right like putting some legit mm-hmm. resources into like my cardio because mm-hmm. I have bogged out in a couple fights and it's not fun mm. when you're exhausted and somebody's trying to beat you up oh and that that, that must be a why I mean I, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. Just yeah, that's like, I, I always joke around that there's like, there's wrestling, there's like jujitsu, there's boxing, kickboxing, yeah. then there's uh, cardio, yeah, and then there's uh, laundry. La- Dude, you laundry. Do so much laundry, bro. <laughs> you get you sweat Every, through so much my, clothes. Bro. So well, I mean, you're working out like three times a day. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you got like a sweaty shirt after sweaty shirt after like 
sweaty oh shorts. Goodness. You just always do laundry. Yeah. Like, dang, dude. Wow. So, how did you balance out not overtraining that? I mean, because uh, you're working at the time, right? You were working, um, not construction, but uh, what was it again? I was doing Ak- is Akamai Pumping Service. So yeah. I was doing like septic tanks, grease traps, cesspools. Like, okay, yeah. that's. Well, I remember seeing you here and there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, War Memorial, all that. Well, no. Maybe a different time, but uh, is that a different job already? No, 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 no. Same time. Same time. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was like Good. sweating in the hot sun <laughs> all day, driving trucks and like doing pretty much like construction kind of work and wow. then training yeah. and then passing out. And then <laughs> passing out and waking up early again. Yeah, yeah. Like, Okay, so I gotta ask this too. What about like food wise? What would you be eating? Cause you're on the go. You're I know. Cuisine. I went. I went keto for a while with okay. like carbs here and there, just for like training sessions. So I timed yeah. like hour forty five minutes before like a session. I would yeah. like eat some yams or like sweet potato or something, Got or like it. some white rice or like try to get something some like gas. Huh? Yeah, cause like especially when you cut carbs, dude. You, it's like keto. It was funny too. This is like, I feel so long ago. I gotta yeah. like remember what I did. Yeah, like, what did I do? What like, did you do? Um, like when you go keto, it's like slow burn energy. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, you're familiar. But mm-hmm. then when you gotta go, like explode, when yeah. you gotta explode, you're just fatigued and exhausted. Yeah. So like, I had to find a balance between like eating too much, eating not enough. Cause this is like freak, like you cut like thirty pounds. Right. Yeah. So, so what you're walking around one seventy five fighting at? I was walking around yeah around seventy fighting at forty five. Oh forty five. Mm-hmm. Dude, you you did not look like forty. Was it a day before weigh ins? Uh, the day at weigh in day. I'm what? 45. So you had a weigh in day of? No no no. Um, oh. The day of yeah the day before the fight. Oh, you got to weigh in. Mm-hmm. And even after rehydrating, you're about. I probably put back like 15 pounds, maybe. I was going to say in the videos, man, you did not look 45. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, this guy is not 145 pounds, I, man. I have that's some the, Skeletor pictures. And see, that's the difference between um, strategic cutting weight, mm-hmm. right, for like wrestling, or MMA, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, like actu- like weight loss. Yeah. Because right? some is actually body fat, losing, all that. Like when you see people in like sauna suits. Yeah. Like, Come on, guy. It's like you're just going to drink some water and, and you get, get back. that back. Right. You know? Right. And so, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Fifteen pounds. And I did that one time um, for a submission only tournament. Do you remember a tournament called Icon in Oahu? I do not. So it was at the Blaisdell, and it was uh, it was a blue belt trying to figure out the top lightweight blue belt, and it was just submission only. And basically, I cut down from one seventy nine, no one eighty to one fifty nine. 80 in, to 59 not in one week and I was holy like, smokes one week yeah one short. week yeah and, and especially I, if you did and I haven't done it yeah I haven't, I haven't done it in a long time because this is like three years after wrestling yeah 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 and I was like just spitting I remember spitting in that water bottle and I was I, like yeah. I'm, I'm 162 guys I know I'm 163 or something like that I was like I'm not gonna make weight and and then uh, I remember spitting in that bottle spitting in that bottle Wait, what were you trying to make uh, 59 yeah three more pounds three more pounds yeah and I remember thinking, like, wow, I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> I tried to do the whole like, water, let go, the, the super hydrate before. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And just thinking, like, wow. Water loading, I think. I mean, water loading, mm-hmm. yeah. Two gallons, one gallon. Um, but, yeah. I mean, that's incredible, man. Like, the mental aspect of that. Because what would you say to, like, somebody, like, if someone's watching or listening to this and they want to do MMA, what would you say to them? You got to be, like, 100% committed. 100% committed. Yeah, you can't be, like, half committed. Yeah. Or, or like, you can't, like, doubt. Like, even though you will, like, yeah. you, you have to know that you're going to do well. Right. So, what does that look like? Like, a half committed guy and a fully committed? Like, what would you picture? You know, you, you can get away with, like, for so long without being, like, 100% committed. But eventually, if you meet a hundred percent committed guy mm. they're just gonna run through you no chance so it's like you gotta be ready for the day that you meet that guy you know yeah. are you at your best self yeah so one of the questions you know going on top of what you just said was asked what should they do in 
preparing for an MMA fight, what would you preparing recommend? Preparing for an MMA? Yeah. Preparing. From nothing? Yeah, if they have zero experience in anything, mm-hmm. and then they have 12 months. Tw- 12 months. 12 months, bro. <laughs> Even 12 is kind of short. It's kind of short. Man. I did jiu-jitsu for a... I mean... Th- I wrestled for a two years, and I did jiu-jitsu <laughs> for three, and I was like, I don't know if I can exactly. even... Exactly, and you yeah. already had like a couple years, you know? Mm-hmm. So what would you say to someone like that has just zero? Huh. I mean, that's the, I thought that was a crazy question, but I was like, all right, I'll throw it in there. Like, uh, I've heard, like, different ways of saying the question, like, like if I have to do it in three months or like yeah, twelve months. So it's it's like more time than not. Yeah, one year. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's enough time to learn some things. Yeah, but not everything. Right. So my advice would be learn a good sprawl. Uh. And two things. So you yeah. can either learn a good sprawl mm-hmm. and focus on your striking, or you can work on a takedown and your jujitsu. Because there's no way you're going to get good at the two. <laughs> the four aspects, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you split it into just striking and grappling, if you can learn one of those, like, so wrestling is like, this is a lame quote, but it's like, <laughs> it's like jujitsu is like the shark, right? So right. Like if you take him down to the ocean, you oh, can drown. Oh, yeah, that's the Hicks and Down. Yep. And there's like, I don't know, you can pick like any animal, like, like a lion. So yeah. st- or what's it? like a striker, you know, like okay. a lion. Yeah. Take a, a lion, lion. yeah. And then like that would be your, your strike. But mm. then you can take like a crocodile mm. and that's like a wrestler. So like wrestlers can like drag you down into yeah. the water or like they can rip you out right. onto the land. Dude, wrestling is so, I mean, it's not underrated anymore, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, wrestling is so good. It's like, it's not the one that finishes the fight yeah. but it like dictates where it's gonna go dictates where you go yeah right? so that's so true if wow. somebody that's why you said sprawl huh yeah sprawl or takedown wow. so you can either pick one or the other Dang. because if you um if you're getting lit up on the feet mm. and you're losing the striking battle yeah what's your next option right i gotta go down yeah, you, you know down. so then you shoot for a paddock double paddock double <laughs> yeah, <I> like that. <laughs> And then they sprawl, you know, yeah. you're, you're, now you just got to stand with them. It's oh not a good goodness. outcome. Or say you get taken down or mm-hmm. they, they shoot on you, you know, and you don't know how to sprawl. Mm. So then now you get sucked oh, into then you the water. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and if you don't know. Yeah. You're just going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get some pounds and some subs get choked. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Wow. So 12 months, either striking and sprawl. Mm hmm. Or wrestling and submissions. Yep. Jiu Jitsu. Wow. And I would pick like three go to submissions. Three go to submissions. Keep it simple. Like one off your back, one from like a top guard, and maybe one from like a sprawl or like a transition mm, or something. Like a turtle. Yeah. Because yeah. wow. even like if you take. And I'm not even the highest level belt. I was. I'll give myself. I'll give myself proclaim. High blue, low purple. I like but, that. Uh, I like that. Uh, only because I only ever trained no gi. But oh, I, okay. I trained jujitsu for quite some time. But right, dude. Um, yeah, you I mean remember? I remember it was ten years ago. We, yeah, we. I remember training with. I was like, this guy's a freaking beast. And I remember that. I was because, just strong and dude, tough guy. And I, I was so shocked, honest to god, because I was like, this guy's the same weight as me. <laughs> I was like one fifty nine at the time, right? One fifty five, something like that. I was like just strong, and I would just drive, just drive. right into a triangle, right into. But I was just thinking, like, dang, man, like this guy is so tough. Like, mm-hmm. bro, that's why, like, the wrestling. As soon as like six months or so, you were able to apply it. All yeah. the wrestling basics, the the base, mm-hmm. like you knew where your weight was and. Like how to cut and slide and you know all that stuff. I was like, oh my goodness! It's just it's good to like even the mindset of wrestling. Like I was saying, you know, when you like wake up early in the morning, you're like, I gotta go do something. You know, like that would be like, like in wrestling, you just at at a certain point, like I'm pretty sure our coach was just trying to kill us. Like mm. just for like one time, he was like, you guys should be doing sprints until you puke, and we were like, I don't know if we're gonna. <laughs> You know, yeah. do that. And he's like, sprint until you puke. Sprint until you puke. And we're like, I mean, I don't even know if I could do that if I wanted to. Yeah. This guy runs a mile 
right? And uh, this is another because this is Coach Cody. I think he's a Got fireman it. now. But this guy didn't even have shoes. Oh. Runs a mile, just like we did. Wow. He lines up for sprints. Bro, he sprints with us once. Sprints with, with us. And he's, wow. I think he's a former state champion. But we're sprinting with him. We sprint again. And this guy starts puking. And I was like, mm. and he's beating all of us. And we're supposed to be in shape, condition, like Young high guys. school wrestlers. And yeah. this guy's like mid-30s. Like, wow. I said puke. You know? And then goes and Bro, does some sprints barefoot. Amazing. Feet raw. You yeah. know? I'm like, that. and now that I think back to it, pretty stupid. But <laughs> the mindset of like, oh. I'm going to sprint till I puke barefoot, you know, yeah. I'd have no problem with it. Oh, See, that's what wrestling does. Yeah, that you mental know, aspect. Because, because it's so easy for just jiu-jitsu to just kind of like, I mean... I love jiu-jitsu, of course, but like it's so easy for the the majority of them. There's some hardcore guys, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely, there's some hardcore guys who are gonna train like that. But I'd say it's a lot easier to be like, ah, let's just it's just flow, dude. Even when right? I went versus like wrestling. Even when I went with Keith, like I didn't know what to expect. Right. I just came from wrestling. Right. And I go to jiu-jitsu. Right. And everybody like, okay, I'm gonna explain a move, and everybody starts sitting down. Yeah. And I was like. We can sit down. We can sit down. <laughs> you know, like, we never got to sit down and wrestle. Like you're standing yeah. up the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, we couldn't even lean against a wall. Right. And see, because I, I, that's that's uh, amazing. I remember the senior year. I only did wrestling one year, but the entire mindset changed because I would always sh- just pull guard before, mm-hmm. and then after that, I was like, I love the single leg. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just, or and the ankle pick. It's just two. I only uh, the the two things. Panuve, Yanagito. Get the pick, get the pick, get the pick. Just scoop the ankle. And I guess just like if I have zero wrestling, he's like, mm-hmm. you're only going to do two or three things. Yeah. Don't get anything fancy. No fireman carry. No, none of that. You're going to just stick to basics. I was like, okay. You know, and um, like wrestling, we would drill a move a hundred times. Like you remember this, probably like lots of reps. It wasn't like, okay, just do it two, three times. Yeah, and then I remember having guys line up and you got to do it to one yeah. guy, another guy, another guy, another guy, another guy in a circle. Yeah, and both sides. Mm-hmm. Double leg left, double leg right. And then I would always suck with the Yeah, you would smash one side. way and then go yeah, the other way. Yeah, and, yeah. Then like, and then okay. you're trying to drive the head like, oh, oh this is this feels wrong. <laughs> like, have you ever tried to like, like, mm, like cut your hair in a mirror? And you're like, how <laughs> did <laughs> go the right dude, way? I actually did during COVID. Yeah, I did it, it too. It horrible, bro. Yeah, dude, like my, the COVID cuts. Yeah, the COVID cuts. And when I went back to cut my hair, uh, shout out to Anna. She was just like, what happened? Yeah. Said, this is what happened with COVID. My friend Lou helped me like hair. cut the sides and I was yeah. like, I'll do the top. I messed up the top. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm just going to have to shave this thing. That's exactly what I didn't shave it. I just buzzed it real short. Yeah. I was like, I can't remember the last time. Curly hair doesn't grow well. <laughs> it doesn't grow well. <laughs> Bro. Wow. And it, it's amazing. So, like, you know, we got to wrap up pretty soon. This is crazy. It's been almost an hour. And, look, that was pretty fast. Yeah. That was pretty fast, man. You know, and that's why I like it. Like, we just vibe good on this one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to say, like, what would you – what advice would you have – for somebody that is scared, let's just say they're they don't like conflict because some people might think, oh, I gotta like conflict to do MMA mm-hmm. or combat sports. What would you say to that person? And you know, why do you think that person who doesn't like conflict should learn at least something? Um, well, I think the a lot of times people think like when you go to like a gym, mm. you get you think of like. A stereotypical like I'm like a t- like there's tough guys in here and I gotta be yeah. tough if I'm gonna go hang out with tough guys yeah. but like every black belt you know was a white belt yeah you know so it's like not only is any has everybody in there once not known anything mm. you know it's not like like when they started it's not like they weren't scared right. you know they weren't like oh what if I go in there and they don't like me or like what if I'm not good enough like eventually you just stick around long enough and you're a self-proclaimed high pur- low purple, high blue. <laughs> <laughs> like <that>. Self-proclaimed, bro. <laughs> that's 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 too funny, man. Wow. But um, yeah. So if you're scared of conflict, for sure, I would. Jiu-jitsu is the way to go, for mm. sure. But um, a lot of people are like I said, they're scared of like the people in the gym. But everyone's right. like nice for the most part. Like right. unless nice? you go to like some messed up gym, you right. know, with like weird vibes, like yeah. For the most part, it's all, like, nice people that you just vibe with. Like, yeah. that's how I met you. Hello. Yeah, that's how we met, right? Yeah. Grappling, so, yeah. 
and uh, like you just get it out like you're the more you learn the more you learn like that you don't need to like use any of this stuff yeah, don't need to use don't need to flex don't need to bark yeah yeah someone says something to you, it's like, oh it's all good yeah like whatever like yeah, you can walk go, away yeah you can be loud over there yeah <laughs> that's fine i'm gonna go over here and it's a great stress relief too mm-hmm, right because mm-hmm. it's like you, you get it all out of your system i remember that in um in college because you know college you're 18 19 20 and people want to just egg you on or whatever and it's just like Nah, I'm good. I, I gotta wake up early tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Like, what yeah. are you doing? I, I gotta train. What are you talking about? Train? We got a party. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. You guys have fun. Well, you're you know they just start egging you on. Like, ah. And you're able to like. That's why I would never expect like. Wait, if you just looked at you objectively and I didn't know you. I feel like I haven't done that. Like I'd be like, dude, this guy's such a nice guy, bro. Like. The camera. Look at this guy's eyes, bro. Where's my camera? <laughs> Look at this guy's eyes and his smile. Ah. And just imagine this guy punching you in the face <laughs> and choking you. That is crazy. <laughs> so with that, bro. Like, if you, uh, one of the last questions I want to ask is if I had, if you have, if there's a magic wand right here, mm-hmm. and you could fight anywhere in the world, where would you fight? If I could fight? Yeah, if you could fight in your next fight, pick anywhere. Mm-hmm. Anywhere in the world. Yeah, where would that be? Probably go. See, now I'm just thinking like. Yeah. Thinking like blood sport, like some Ooh. crazy location. Yeah, but yeah, I'd probably go yeah. with like the MGM or someplace huge like Las Vegas. Like there you go. Like where is it? The t- uh, Madison Square Garden. Oh, those are big ones. Yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. But you gotta do it then. Ah, we'll you see. Just, you just said it, but you gotta do it. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Yeah. I. Oh. Um. I mean, to talk about. Yeah. Last thing. Yeah. I'm doing personal training. Yeah. For boxing and kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Anybody that wants to come down and uh, check it out, it's over in Wailuku. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm working on being a. Damn. I, I want to be a coach more so now. You know nice. Is, like, at first I was a little intimidated because it's like, like. You're if you aren't the best at everything, like why are you gonna teach it? You know, uh-huh. like. But what I, my feelings towards like being a coach is, it's not about being able to do all like the to be the best like fighter. Like to be the best fighter, you have to be the best fighter. But mm-hmm. to be the best coach, you don't have to be a. You need to be a good fighter, a decent mm-hmm. fighter, but um, you need to be the best coach. So like right now, what I'm working towards is being a being the best coach. Mm. So like I've recently fallen in love with. Um, I've recently fallen in love with just um, like teaching people, showing people that know nothing, mm. at least about like with with you, like <laughs> about uh, like striking in general, yeah. teaching just like jabs, crosses, hooks, you know, giving you like, like I said, like come into a gym mm-hmm. and um, just learn from the ground up, build mm-hmm. self-confidence, know that you can defend yourself. You can already defend yourself on the ground. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, defend yourself on the feet as well. <laughs> even less afraid of, you can be even less afraid of confrontation. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So wait, you just said that at the end, if you know more, you can be less scared of confrontation. Yes. Uh, is that because you know like the reality of like... It would be like, like I already need, this is going to sound cocky, but it's like, I already know that if like, if you were to like, mm, try to like, attack me, right. me or like do Someone something, tries to something attack crazy, you. it would just be like, I back away, you know, and if you wanted to engage, like, sure. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's all you would do. I mean, that or just like a, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah that'd be that. Um, so if you want to come down and learn, where can they find you, bro? Uh, you can, can find me on you? Instagram at yeah. Vincent S. Some people say Vincent's. So how do you spell that? V-I-N-S-O-N. S. Wait, wait, one more time? V I N S O N S. S. Mm-hmm. Vincent. That's my handle on Instagram. Got it. I'm working on, I just cut that promo video, so you'll probably see that out sometime. Dang, uh, yeah, let week. us know. Uh, and then there. my girlfriend has Fit with Mariah. She's mm. been training women over I know, at we that. just met her. Yep, yep. Yeah. She's been over at the Wailuga CrossFit. And um, yeah, oh, also, if you don't even want to learn, if your intentions aren't to learn how to like fight mm-hmm. or like learn self defense, like just come down and get a good workout in. Yeah. You know, punching and kicking, and it's exhausting. It's I know. Work, I've been in, <laughs> after three minutes, you know, between <laughs> rounds in a fight, you're exhausted. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Wow. Dang, man. I so, feel like we should do this again. 
We gotta do this again, man. Yep. We gotta do this again, man. This is good. Like, you know it's gonna be a good episode when time flies. You're like, whoa, it's already almost an hour. Yeah, like, we've gotta cut soon. <laughs> Dude, I went to Waluka Coffee Company before yeah, this. I, I had a large iced coffee. Uh-huh. I um I was looking at your po- I I listened to a handful of your podcasts. Yeah. One that one episode the whole way through and then a few just here and there. And I'm looking at the times, I was like, forty six minutes, like twenty seven minutes. I'm like, Okay, this one was an hour. I'm like, dude, I don't know if this guy. Like, I'm hopped up on coffee. This might go off the rails. Like, I could talk for a long time. <laughs> yeah, if you need it, me too. <laughs> so this one be one of the longer ones. Yeah, yeah. sweet. It's only very rare that we go past 45 minutes because nice. 45 minutes is usually like, oh, okay, you know, we wrapped up a bunch, but one hour, it's usually like we vibing good. Like, I feel like, like I didn't oh, even man. get going to like 20 minutes in. <laughs> you got warm. You got warm. Yeah, you got warm. We're working on real life. Yeah, posture. So like. I even tell you like relax your shoulders. I'm not. I'm not over here sitting just like. Yeah. Oh yeah, relax your shoulders. Oh. Oh my God, that's hilarious, bro. You know, you know. Thank you guys so much. And one final question that we ask every guest is: If you guys haven't subscribed, then all that subscribe, comment below, leave your likes, everything. Vince, when you see this, bro, fighting sickness with fitness. What does that mean for you, Vince? Fighting sickness with fitness. What I see is like sickness can mean like, so many different things. Yes. It's not only just like your body, it's mm-hmm. your mind, it's like things that you're dealing with, like oh. adversity, and even fitness. It, yeah. Fitness wouldn't even, doesn't even have to directly correlate to like doing squats, doing push ups, doing lunges. Yeah. It's just being healthy and yeah. having like the mindset to push through things that are hard and mm-hmm. be the best version of, your, of yourself. Uh, I messed up the last part. Be the best version of yourself. Being the best version of yourself. Oh, there it oh. is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for watching. Y'all need a podcast episode 40. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. And we'll see you in the next one. Done.